Today on Rappler, President Aquino defends the cybercrime law and wants to keep the controversial libel provision. Until now, hindi ako naniniwala na yung pagpasok ko sa politika, yun lang yung paraan para itaguyod ko yung legacy ng asama ko. Malagay ko kahit wala ko sa politika ang ginagawa ko. Pero ito talaga, ginagawa ko para in honor sa asawa ko. Kasi alam ko, importante sa kanya, alagaan yung grupo ang pinagunod. Lenny Urbredo, wife of late Interior Secretary Jesse Urbredo, runs for Congress. And Una protests the appointment of Liberal Party member Grace Padaka to the Comelec. Hi, I'm Natasha Gutierrez, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino defends the country's new cybercrime law and says he wants to keep its controversial provision on online libel. Aquino says anyone who writes something libelous must shoulder responsibility. He adds whatever the format, if what you said was wrong, the victim should have the right for redress. Aquino says he is open to lowering the penalties for online libel but says that the law should be implemented immediately. He says the law also addresses gaps in laws covering crimes such as computer fraud, identity theft, and computer-related forgery. The National Union of Journalists of the Philippines slams the president's position and calls for assistance and defiance. Bowing to pressure from supporters, Lenny Robredo, wife of late Interior Secretary Jesse Robredo, is running for representative of the 3rd District of Camarines Sur. Mrs. Robredo had been under pressure from supporters to run. They reportedly need a unifying figure to protect the legacy of the late Secretary Jesse Robredo. Mrs. Robredo will be running against Nelly Favis Villafuerte, wife of outgoing Representative Luis Villafuerte Sr. Villafuerte Sr. is a patriarch of a well-entrenched political clan in the Bicol region and uncle of Jesse Robredo. Mrs. Robredo says she does not want to run and her three children were against it. Sabi ng mga anak ko, Pero sabi ko nga nila na sasabi nila yan kasi baka hindi nila nakikita na dugo at pawis yung pinigay ng asawa ng swata para itaguyod yung dugo. Until now, hindi ako naniniwala na yung pagpasok ko sa politika yun lang yung paraan para itaguyod ko yung legacy ng asawa ko. Malagay ko kahit wala ko sa politika ng asawa ko. Pero ito talaga, ginagawa ko para in honor sa asawa ko kasi alam ko importante sa kanya a low-profile political wife, Robredo entered national consciousness following the death of her husband on August 18. She had previously rejected calls for her to run. The period for filing of certificates of candidacy officially ends Friday afternoon, with 84 Filipinos filing candidacies for the 2013 senatorial race. Commission on Elections Chairman Sixto Brillantes notes there is an increase in the number of candidates for 2013 compared to the 2010 senatorial race, adding there are more nuisance candidates too. He says of the 84, 36 of those who filed COCs ran with political parties, while 48 of them ran as independent candidates. The most number of candidates came from the Marcos era Kilusang Bagong Lipunan at nine senatorial candidates. Una has eight candidates, the Liberal Party and the Nationalista Party both have three. Two of Pampanga Representative Gloria Arroyo's co-accused in a plunder case have surrendered. Former Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office Chairman Sergio Valencia and Assistant General Manager for Finance Benigno Agua surrendered Thursday night. Arroyo herself was arrested Thursday at the Veterans Memorial Medical Center, where she is now under hospital arrest. The 366 pes million peso plunder case filed against Arroyo and nine others is in connection with the alleged misuse of PCSO intelligence funds. The Judicial and Bar Council will interview 12 contenders for the post of Supreme Court Associate Justice. The public interviews will be held on October 23 and 25. Three under candidates, De La Salle University Law Dean Jose Manuel Jocno, Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Teresita Herbosa, and former Ateneo Law Dean Cesar Villanueva have already been interviewed by the JBC when they applied for the post of Chief Justice. The 15 contenders are seeking the seat left vacant by Maria Lourdes Sereno, 
when she was appointed Chief Justice on August 24. The United Nationalist Alliance of Vice President Jejumar Binay, which vowed to support President Benigno Aquino, protests the appointment of Grace Padaca to the Commission on Elections. UNA Secretary General Toby Tianco says Padaca is a member of the Liberal Party and is expected to favor party allies. He says the government showed favoritism when Padaca was not arrested despite the warrant of arrest issued against her for graft charges. Aquino paid the 70,000 peso bail Padaca posted Thursday. Chanko says Padaka failed her first test of independence as, Com as Comelec Commissioner when she posted bail accompanied by LP President on leave, Mar Rojas. Rappler editor-at-large Mertes Vito talks about the family as an enduring institution, even in politics. Let's watch her video blog. Jinky Pacquiao, wife of boxing icon Manny Pacquiao, surprised residents of Sarangani when she decided to run for vice governor of the province. She explained that she merely wanted to help her husband do public service. Manny is seeking re-election in Congress, and his younger brother, Roel, is also running for congressman in South Cotabato. The story of the Pacquiao's repeats itself in many places, and most visibly in the Senate. If Jock, son of Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, Jave Ejercito, half-brother of Senator Jingoy Estrada, and Alan Peter, brother of Senator Pia Cayetano, win, the Senate will be studded with members of the same families. If Cynthia, wife of Senator Manny Villar, and Sonny, son of Senator Edgardo Angaro, win, they will simply replace family members. While the family is an enduring institution in the Philippines, it shouldn't extend itself to politics, as it is many local and national elective posts seem to be reserved for sons and daughters, wives and husbands, and siblings of entrenched politicians. Newcomers who do not belong to political families or are not backed by elite money find it hard to win the national races. Will the Philippines ever reach a stage wherein outsiders emerge victorious? Let's take the case of Brazil. Da Silva came from the ranks of the workers and won as president. To many people surprised, he was a good president and is remembered for social programs that alleviated poverty. In May next year, let's keep the example of Brazil in mind. For the second time, the Justice Department gives dismissed Chief Justice Renato Corona, his daughter and his son-in-law, 10 more days to file their counter-affidavits on their tax evasion cases. But the department says this will be the last extension. Last month, the Bureau of Internal Revenue filed a 150 million, million peso tax evasion case against Corona, daughter Maria Carla Castillo, and son-in-law Constantino, Constantino Castillo III, rather, after they allegedly failed to disclose their taxable income for years. Lawyer Anacleto Diaz says he needs more time to prepare his client's counter-affidavits because of the three separate charges. There's a new trend in big business in the Philippines. It's the partnership between telecommunications and media companies. Catherine Visconti tells us that's because communications infrastructure needs one key ingredient, content. The Philippines are eyeing each other as partners. Lopez-led TV station ABS-CBN and Ayala-led telco firm Globe are discussing potential business synergies. The small Lopez-led telco, Bayan, already signed an agreement to share some of its frequencies with Globe. Ramon Ong San Miguel Corporation backs broadband provider Y-Tribe and is interested in buying a stake in the partially state-owned media firm Radio Philippines Network 9. 34% of RPN9 is owned by Solar Entertainment Group, which Ong personally wants to buy into. Pangilinan-led Philippine long-distance telephone company owns Smart and bought the Gokongwe's Sun Cellular brand in 2011. A PLDT unit also holds Network TV5, which comes in a distant third next to ABS-CBN and GMA7. The Pangilinan-led group has tried three times in over a decade to add the larger and higher-rated GMA7 network into its fold. With the takeover shelved, GMA7 is on its own as an independent player. So in the end, it's GMA7 who will be lost out, right? Because for you to be a bigger company, you need to align or to partner with somebody who can extend you to uh, become part of the multi-media industry. The moves are part of a growing trend towards convergence. 
telecommunications firms admit their expensive networks need content. The fact is that telcos, no matter how modernized, and even if they behave as a peer utility, will eventually become obsolete. Social media will eventually merge with us and us with them. Even the world of television and radio will change. Analysts tell Rappler Pangilinan's strategy may be stalled because of the failed deal. You just talked about the strategy. Then um, PMDT would be uh, sort of semi-negative here because they did have a plan. Now they have to push. That was like sort of plan, plan B. So they would have to revert back to plan A, which is TV5. So you could say that it has affected their strategy. But even if third time's not the charm for the GMA7 PLDT deal, the TV network claims the two are still on friendly terms. I mean, you it's up, I mean, it's up to them to make an offer. Uh -uh. Because we have a waiver that able to resolve uh -uh. certain issues yes. that have nothing to do with the crime. Yeah, yeah, they're very friendly. Uh -uh. There is no blood in the carpet. It was an amicable understanding. <laughs> open for renewing the deal, but not very wide. He says nothing is impossible. Gozon may have hit the nail on the head. With telcos and media firms cozying up to each other, several new relationships may not be too far away. Catherine Visconti, Rappler, Manila. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, the UN Security Council condemns Syria in the strongest terms for its deadly shelling of Turkey that killed five Turkish women and children on October 3. Turkey retaliated against the military position inside Syria that reportedly killed several soldiers. UN Chief Ban Ki-moon urges restraint along the neighbor's tinderbox border as Turkey demands strong Security Council action. After hours of haggling between Turkey's Western allies and longtime Syria backer Russia, the top UN body issues its statement. It is strongly worded, but stops short of a, formal, of a formal resolution. At number eight, who is the next Steve Jobs? It's a question often asked in tech circles ever since the legend died exactly a year ago today, October 5. CNN concedes that no figure in the tech industry will perfectly duplicate the unique blend of vision, salesmanship, mystique, and eye for detail possessed by Jobs. But it draws up a list of technology leaders analyzing their pros and cons. It includes Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook CEO, Tim Cook, Tim Cook, Apple CEO, Jonathan Ive, Apple Senior Vice President, and Marissa Mayer, Yahoo CEO. At number nine, a recent Swedish study shows that an aspirin a day may slow brain decline among elderly women. A BBC report says researchers tested 500 women facing risk of cardiovascular disease and discovered that those who took aspirin performed better. The questions asked during the test include orientation questions and visual spatial tests. Researchers warn against self-medication. And at number 10, Puerto Rican featherweight Orlando El Olimpico Cruz, a former Olympian and the current WBO Latino featherweight champion, announces he is gay. He is the first boxer in the history of the sport to come out of the closet. It is a surprise in a sport where gay insults are easily thrown around. The boxer says he's out to inspire kids like him who may be thinking about taking up professional boxing. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, October 5, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Natasha Gutierrez, and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. We leave you with these images from the week's filing of candidacies.